And what's so funny about this is that you see the little white object uh, right by the 04 on the bottom of the screen. We thought that was like a laundry basket. It's a chair, a wooden chair with a red top that they bought at Kmart in Las Vegas. Folks, I'm not lying to you. Well, what are you going to do? You know, you're the government. You need a stool in the interview suite. You know, what are you going to do? Have the woodwork shop in Area 51 make one? No, you, you know, you put it on your supply requisition. We find a master sergeant that did requisition for Papoose Lake. He told us how to order a wall clock, how to get a desk, how to get a chair. Amazing. So, you know, as, as high tech and spooky as this is, there's a chair on the bottom of the of the film, you know, bought from Kmart in Las Vegas. You know, I was going to say the eyes too. It looks almost like something's reflected in them, which you don't. Well, see yeah, that that's that's the, would be the camera going yeah. through the glass, you know, through yeah. the glass. Here's another interesting thing that we we were told this was filmed on 16 millimeter. All Things Unexplained is free to watch on YouTube and listen to wherever you get your podcasts. If you would like to support our show, you can visit our YouTube store. Additionally, you can find us on Venmo under All Things Unexplained. Be sure to check out our website, allthingsunexplained.com. All proceeds from the sales of Dr. Mounce's books on Amazon and Audible also go straight to our show. I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched closely by intelligences greater than man's. Did the CIA write Wind of Change by the Scorpions? <laughs> <laughs> As humans busied themselves about the various concerns, they were scrutinized and studied. Dr. Loeb, what percentage chance do you give it that you have indeed uncovered extraterrestrial or non-human technology? With infinite complacence, people went about their affairs, yet across an immense ethereal gulf, intellects vast and unsympathetic drew their plans against us. All of a sudden, a stick out of nowhere landed right in front of us, and there was no tree, nothing overhead, something threw it at us. Yeah. All things unexplained. So some of that I think there will say for close up. Hey all you unexplained ones, welcome to All Things Unexplained. For this evening, I am Dr. Mouse and I'm joined by my co-host Smitty Neves. Before we get started, I'd like to say if you enjoy our content and we've had a pretty outstanding week and it's only getting better, ways you can support the show please make sure to hit the subscribe button, comment on this show, hit the like button, and share what you're watching. Another way you can support, if you look right beside the chat bar, you'll see super chats and super stickers. If you have any questions for us or our guest tonight, put, please put them in all caps so that I can get them up. For our special guest that we would like to welcome, John Stewart, to the show tonight. John, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, You're welcome. You, thank you for having me. I would like to ask you something briefly, John, that you touched on. You touched on this notion that someone is communicating with this being, telepath I would say, telepathically, and this is how the interview is being conducted. And this is not the first that, that we have heard of this happening. There are other whist uh, military whistleblowers out there that have said they were involved in very similar programs as this. Now, this sort of telepathic communication, John, help me out here. Would you put that in the realm of remote viewing, which we know the CIA has conducted official operations on, but then also here recently with Diana Pasulka in American Cosmic, and, and then in UFO of God with Chris Bledsoe, who's just right down the road from us here at All Things Unexplained Fable. We have this notion of certain people are able to, for whatever reason, it seems like communicate with the phenomenon and and it seems like people are not exactly sure why or why that is so remote viewing and then this uh diana pasulka chris bledsoe stuff of you know some people like tyler from american cosmic and chris bledsoe they just seem more connected where where do you put where do you think that that falls in this spectrum something unto itself it's called thought projection you walk into the room and immediately you hear your own voice 
Folks, listen to me here. Many people tell me this. This is not my speculation. You walk into the room with these beans, bean, your voice starts to, you start to hear your voice in your head saying, I know you want to talk to me about the object in the Indian Ocean. Here's what I can tell you. Here's what it is. So on and so forth. It's called thought projection. And I want to give a very interesting anecdotal story, pure conjecture, but I think it's interesting. Don't know how you can make this up. The telepath would turn one time, turn to the general and said, he's being like snarky with me. He's asking me, do you know where I come from? And, and the general's like, well, did, did, did you, are you thinking of something that would insult him? And, you know, there was a consternation here of like, oh, they've, they've agitated the alien. And the being is going, no, do you know where I come from? My planet, my origination. So I thought it was an interesting, again, anecdotal story of even we have a language barrier when it's up, when it's thought projection. So, um, and then you see the doctor to the beans, right? Our left. I spoke to his widow, ladies and gentlemen, he died in California in 2014. And, uh, his, she said, that's him that I, of course I close, I zoomed in what you have to do on this video is zoom in and see the mouth opening and closing flawlessly. One eye is bigger than the other eye. It's just all of these animatronic configurations that would be so hard to do back in 1996, not impossible, but at the low level budget of this production company, you know, the uh, fluid flows from the, from the mouth, the ice, the ocular uh, skin region around the eyes. And it go, does like four, five different shapes. There's our good doctor. You can see a clear, clear picture of him. I had one. And you know what? I'm just going to be honest with you, John. This is haunting. This image that we see yeah. on the screen. I've paused the video, and yeah. the being seems to be in distress. His, right. his mouth is agape. His eyes seem to, if they're not bigger and wider, they seem to be to me. But they have a, they have a special a look realness. to them. Yeah. Yes. Well, there's a, a realness. realness. To them. And we'll I've heard of this phenomenon in Hollywood too, right? Where they had to discover that sometimes they make they try to make eyes look a certain way, and they just look they looked fake yeah. because they were they too like real. Shark you know eyes, what I mean? Cow eyes. Yeah. yeah. And what's so funny about this is that you see the little white object uh, right by the zero four on the bottom of the screen. We thought that was like a laundry basket. It's a chair, a wooden chair with a red top, that they bought at Kmart in Las Vegas. Folks, I'm not lying to you. But what are you going to do? You know, you're the government. You need a stool in the interview suite. You know, what are you going to do? Have the woodwork shop in Area 51 make one? No, you, you know, you put it on your supply requisition. We find a master sergeant that did requisition for Papoose Lake. He told us how to order a wall clock, how to get a desk, how to get a chair. Amazing. So, you know, as, as high tech and spooky as this is, there's a chair on the bottom of the, of the film you know, bought from Kmart in Las Vegas. You know, I was crazy. Gonna say the eyes too. It looks almost like something's reflected in them, which you don't. Well, see yeah, that that's that's the, would be the camera going yeah. through the glass. You know, through yeah. the glass. Here's another interesting thing that we we were told this was filmed on 16 millimeter. The special effects people that were hired for the documentary agree. Looks like 16 millimeter film. Who will use 16 millimeter film in 1996? No production company did. Uh, sometimes you would get splices of 16 millimeter film. So like uh, New York university film department students would use it for two minute, you know, one minute shorts, but most 99% of production companies used, you know, super eight high eight. And this was shot on 16 millimeter film. What was used in 1991 in the government audiovisual departments in the military, 16 millimeter film was VHS phased in. Of course it was. But at the 1991, you filmed any important event uh, in, with 16 millimeter film. Let me also say they're going to be shining the flashlight. They are not shining it in the creature's eyes. They're looking in the orbital and nasal cavity for hemorrhaging because the creature yep, was coughing go. so much. You see the guy's hand on the right side, the shadow? That's Admiral Ned Schaefer, liaison to Colin Powell for the intelligence for the Joint Chiefs of Staff, deceased. And this John, is no let, joke, folks. I'd like to address something with you here. Okay. Uh, when we see this part of the video, 
we see some medical people come in. They have some some PPE on, and this is a criticism that's out there. I would call it in UFO Twitter, and I've actually rebutted against this, but I want to get your take, John. They've got on some latex gloves. It appears to be some face mask and perhaps some scrubs, like cap and scrub gowns type. But some people have criticized, you know what, wow, if this really was an extraterrestrial or NHI being with unknown biological parts and viruses, who knows what it could have, they think that the medical people would be much more suited up in PPE, like, uh, I guess, think Ebola type of outbreak. Had, and, and I really think, I want to remind everybody what you said earlier that resonated with me is that, you know, it was pointed out by someone that, hey, they really had these folks in for their ability to stay quiet as opposed to their medical expertise. Right. But how do you address the criticism about the PPE here? Number one, and forgive me, and I say this respectfully, how does anybody on Twitter universe know if the being was biological contaminant, I'll, I'll wait for your answer. Well, and, and like you okay, said, number, a moment two, ago. number two, they have been these, we've had these Ebens in captivity since 1947. So it has obviously been determined that most of them are not a biological contaminant to human beings. Have we had sort stories that some extraterrestrials visiting this planet are a biological contaminant and deadly to humans? Yes. James Fox, the god of documentaries, I, I don't know why, but I'm not, I'm not picking a fight. His uh, Varagana Brazil bean was obviously a contaminant. The soldier died or the doc, the uh, military officer died after touching it. We have been told that these beans have been here for the, around the, 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 the military for 50 years, we know they're not a biological contaminant. We're actually more of a risk to them than them to us. And again, screenwriter 1996 puts the doctors in uh, scrubs, short sleeve scrubs, mask, gloves, hats. Victor tells us in 1996, this facility, this interview suite is kept at bio safety level two, the lowest safety level. I go on Wikipedia. What's bio level safe level two for the military? Gloves, surgical hat, mass scrubs. Hmm. Interesting. So they weren't a contamination to the people at this facility. And we knew that because we've been dealing with this type of being uh, the gray, so to speak, for over 50 years. So that's why, again, like I said, run of the mill. I think like the, the cameraman was having a cup of coffee and a styrofoam cup and it's everyone ready. Okay. Bring the alien in. Here we go. Yeah. And I'm you know what? Lit. I'm just, I just think this was a run of the mill 45 years later, another gray alien. Let's ask him this. Okay. I, I think everyone you can just ready? wrap it Sorry. down to the, the saying this, this ain't my first rodeo. That's what exactly. we say in the South. Yeah. Exactly. This, I didn't think about this, but that's a great point. If we believe, and, and honestly, we think the evidence points to this, that we did take possession of alien beings and alien technology in Ros at Roswell in 1947, then you're exactly right here in 1991 or the 90s, whenever this interview years. happened. It, yeah, it would certainly we would certainly would have gained a lot of knowledge about how we can right. safely interact with these beings. Right. So, I think that's a great point. And John, I would like to yeah. bring up a couple of listener comments here real quick. Sure. That I think are pretty on point on point. And this is from listener Sean West. Just a quick chime in here about Hollywood making this puppet. If you compare side by side the major studio productions of the eighties, which incorporated puppets in films like E. T., The Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, all great movies, by the way. But we know, and this list, listener Sean West has a great point. You know, these creators could not have made something that moved like this back then and i believe it too i just just with the eye test it's just, a major it's, studio are people yeah. listening to me this was rocket pictures i'm sorry i'm getting excited but my pro wrestler <laughs> in me is taking over this was a second tier production video company selling a chevy chase caddyshack s 
golf VHS video in Variety magazine. This was not Steven Spielberg. This was one take, okay? This film, Victor was not an actor. I have talked to everybody at Rocket Pictures. I talked to the gentleman at Fox that Victor went to before Rocket and they threw him out of Fox. Victor was not an actor. How does a government retired employee who didn't drive have that freaking three minute production in his in his hand as a VHS tape? Stop telling me about major Hollywood productions. Well, I think okay? that's reminiscent of Please the Gimlin Patterson it, film. Give up. Don't you mounts. I think that's reminiscent of the Gimlin Patterson film. I don't think anybody at the time when that came out could have recreated a costume that elaborate even hollywood because well i think you know, john the whole body yes it does if you'll see you'll go on twitter you can find it on youtube or google it's a uh, there, there's a guy on facebook unofficial alien guy he shows the, the 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 hollywood black screen and the blue screen from victor showing the arms showing the thoracic thoracic region you see the flashlight of the medic on the chest area for about three seconds. Zoom in on the face in the last t 10 seconds of the film, folks. You'll see the mouth opening and closing like a guppy, like a like a bluegill in a lake, not like a creature and a, a, a character at a ride at Disney World in 1970. I mean, Jesus, Christmas, five different shapes of the eyes. Four different shapes of the mouth. The mouth opens simultaneously. The bottom lip has a resting bitch face, if I can be very bawdy. I mean, all of these, somebody would have said that it took five animatronic people with remote control cable. I mean, come on, stop. A strip mall video production company created this alien. Give me a freaking break. Sorry. Oh, by the way, no one's come forward to claim it in 30 years, in case you forgot about that 20 minutes ago. And I think that's a huge point, John. Let's just put Victor aside for one minute. You know, we really believe that part of effectively debunking something that can be debunked sometimes is trying to prove it's wrong. You know, not trying to prove it's true, but trying to prove it's wrong. And you take a documentary like this, and if this was faked, you're talking about support staff, you know, all kinds of people involved in this situation. Right. And yep. it honestly should be relatively easy to right. debunk if it is fake. And I think that it's great, you know, that you're putting this out there for no other reason than you're throwing down the gauntlet, the challenge for people to go out there right. and hey, hey, man, start digging fake. into it. Folks, I came to prove this was fake. Do you know what my yes, problem is? That's a great After way to do years, it, too. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry for interrupting. I, I, I get... I get but after five years and twenty thousand dollars, do you know what's happened? No one has told me and debunked it. I can't find anyone with proof. Not an FX guy saying, "Oh yeah, it's fake, fake, fake." I could do that. Do it. Then do it. You'd be a hero to the UFO world. He'd get five thousand dollars an hour at any UFO Comic Con. Do it. Make that bean with the five mouth movements, with the different eye sockets showing the whole body. With the fluid coming out, make them real simple. If somebody said John Stewart couldn't do a power slam in a wrestling ring, and I said I could do it, believe me, I would find a wrestling ring and I would show you that I could do it. So to the FX world, do it. Prove it. And I'll I'll and just speak for us here at the your show. Colleagues that did that. Yeah, I'll just speak for us here at the show. We've tried to prove his fake. It's just a dead end. To me, it's kind of like a little bit like sports. To you know when you're Sometimes you debate on, you know, who the best team is, who should be in the NCAA right. tournament, that sort of thing. Right. And you hear people say, well, just go by the eye test, you know. And the eye test of this, it really is, it just is different, you know. Right. And there's so many things. And, John, I think it actually lends validity to the film that it doesn't show more than what it shows. Because if this was a production that was seeking – viewers right and publicity right. and that sort of thing then why not go all out i mean have we seen a movie here lately i mean the the summer blockbuster is known for certain things and holding back right. is not one of them right Playing here's, the an, here's here. another thing with this with the blip the screen the monitor 
Again, 23-year-old screenwriter, we can't find out what that monitor is. Do you know who has laid claim to it? Whitley Stryber. Whitley Stryber said, quote, I think the alien interview is real because when I was writing communion, I believe the beans were communicating with me and I saw that green blip out of the corner of my eye in the air above my desk and I would try and grab it and I couldn't. How would that screenwriter know that is how certain beans communicate the green blip and then put it into this thought projection interview? How would he know? Whitley Stryber told no one about his seeing that green blip as he was writing the book communion. Can any of your skeptics tell me, you know, collate and answer that? Little fun fact, Whitley Stryber says that's what he saw in the corner of his eye, and it shows and way after this was filmed. So how did the screenwriter, the production person, the director know to put a green blip in there and know that that's how, according to Whitley Stryber, aliens, this type of alien communicates with human beings? And I'll tell you this I too, hope, John. Come on. Um, I, I have young kids. I have young kids, and, you know, we're watching – this video again and, and we see the being in distress again f medical right. physical distress right. i would not show my young kids this video because i find it disturbing yes. and they can watch clearly fake things and say and not right. find that disturbing at all right because it's clearly a puppet sure. or it's clearly right. a cartoon you right. know that sort of thing but again this is different this is moving I know of people personally that this video has touched, deeply touched, deeply and deeply disturbed and saddened them, by the way, because they can sense, like you said, they sense emotions and soul in this being. And I, that's just, I think it's really moving. Yeah, there's a podcaster in Germany, Daniel Groth, and he said, John, I never talked about my experience because my being was tan and had round eyes. And he goes, when I saw this film, I fell off the chair. This was this was the bean type of bean that I experienced. You know, again, if I'm hoaxing a film, why would I have a gray alien tan and not have pointed almond eyes? You know, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. And folks, you know, just so I can get this in, I still don't know 100% what's going on with this film. I hope you can appreciate that. I don't know for sure. And I do. What UFO <laughs> I, research says I, that? I, Me. I don't know for sure. But I know one thing. Not one person in five years, $20,000. I've been to Cuba, England, all over the United States. Not one whistleblower, one witness, one Hollywood person has come up with one bona fide, verifiable piece of evidence that a detective would say, yep, this, this proves it's a hoax. Not one person my five-year investigation in 30 years since this video has been out. You explain yes, that. I John, can't. I appreciate your stance there on admitting that you are you don't know exactly what's going Thank on you. here. You admit that you don't 100% know the truth because we do that at the show. We nope. like to present things as a spectrum of probabilities. Nothing on the spectrum of probabilities is generally 100 or 0. Right. Okay. I think that that's just the best approach to take it. And when you hear people say, okay, 100% this or 0% that, you can just go pretty much go ahead and not trust those folks because that's right. not the case for anything in life pretty much. And listener Sean West chimes in here, says, if a special effects company created this creature, they would have taken credit for it long ago. Amen. Absolutely. It's an Oscar-winning performance. Well, I'll, I mean, just look at IMDb, folks. Hey, we're on IMDb for a commercial we made. Shout out to Smoky Mountain Squat Shine, okay? Right. Much less if we came up with this, son, you best believe somebody's going to be knowing about it. I'm just going to tell you. I'm still yeah, I mean, with my, my, my wrestling championship ring on, and when I'm at a bar or, you know, I click it on the table, somebody noticed me. God. You made that bean, and you're not telling everybody that's got two ears that you did that. Give me a break. Give me a I break. Mean, uh, the whole point in, me. in doing any of this, if this was a hoax, is to make money. And by not telling anybody, you're definitely not making any money. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, nothing. 
So you're wasting the talent. But if you, you yeah, we know what Rocket was project. paid by the UPN network or actually Reicher Entertainment. And we know what Victor was paid. There, there was no money to make this high tech bean, which is why they made that crappy alien for the B roll, the fake alien interview for the documentary. That's all the money they had. So, again, follow the money. I did follow the money. There was no money to make this type of bean. We can just look at uh, the movie that obviously all of us were probably affected by in our youth was E.T. E.T. looks nothing as good as this this right here that right. we see. Right. The movement is point. unbelievable. Yeah. The it, it was the first movie I ever yeah. saw in the theater. It was in the Joy County uh, or uh, Joy Theater in Pontotoc, Mississippi. I was seven years old, and I was probably, honestly, in hindsight, way too young to see E.T. because it has some not-so-appropriate things in it. And the line of people were around the block to get in the little Joy Theater to right. see E.T. But you're yeah. right, Smitty. I mean, you didn't see E.T. get up and go running across the room either, basically. Like, they right. they I mean, also kind of kept him in a basket, had, right, or under blankets and things. And Spielberg had a huge budget, huge Huge like this, and and to me, Strip mall, this looks video more like light than ET did, right? Uh, so, right. exactly. And I'm convinced I'm going to put this back up, and we have a still frame of the being looking into the camera. And I'm convinced that you do see its eyes move around. I mean, we know we see its mouth. Yeah, move. there's a picture on Twitter. The the our left eye is small. The right, our right eye, a side of the eye, if we're looking at it, is massive. And people are like, uh, 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 like, why would an animatronic person spend the thousands of dollars so you could move the shape of the eye millimeters so the fat, bald guy from Chicago 30 years later could catch it? Does that make any sense? Right. I'm, I'm, I'm the fat, bald guy, by the way, folks. <laughs> but I'm just saying, why, why would you spend this money and move it just so... So a guy 30 years later would catch it, not right there. And I and right. I'd like to talk about the 27 before we run out of time because that's the it's the bombshell. It's the bombshell that Let's proves it, it wasn't a screenwriter. So I'm watching a documentary about the Ronald Reagan briefing. When Ronald Reagan got into office, he's at Camp David. Lyndon Molden Howell puts a documentary together where he was briefed on extraterrestrials and the classifications of extraterrestrials. Four in the morning, I'm blurry-eyed. I see 27 on the top of every single Ronald Reagan briefing page. And I wake up my wife. I said, there's 27 there. Next morning, I run to one of my military whistleblowers. I said, 27. It's on the bottom of the alien film. It's on the Ronald Reagan briefing papers. What is 27? And the military guy goes, it's on the alien interview? He's like, well, I, I don't remember seeing that. I said, what is 27? He said, well, that's Yankee White. What's Yankee White? He said, it's one of the top security designations. If you have the Yankee White 27 clearance, you're able to see documents, video, you, information with the 27 classification, which means you have direct contact with the president of the United States. So that's why... 27's on the film of the alien interview because Rear Admiral Ted Schaefer was in that viewing gallery watching that interview. Rear Admiral Ned Schaefer, I have him in the Oval Office with Colin Powell briefing George Bush. Now, you're going to tell me a screenwriter in 1996 and director are going to know what 27 is and means when no one knew of it. I basically found out what it was two years ago and then put it on the bottom of the film game set and match okay 27 and that's the clearance you need for s2 alpha and s4 it's for direct contact with the president of the united states so if you didn't have yankee white clearance and you sat down in a viewing room and this film comes on and you see 27 you have to get up and leave the room you don't have that clearance but admiral ned schaefer was in that room he was an intelligence briefing liaison to Colin Powell and the Joint Chiefs, and we've got him in the Oval Office during the reign of George Bush. Period, game, set, match. Thank you. And you know what, John? 
at the show, we have friends in the military, veteran friends, friends who are currently in the military. We have friends in aerospace, friends at Space Force. What you said, it has the ring of truth. Like, they they say yes. That, that totally makes sense. They see that. Now, civilians, people on UFO Twitter, that might not make any sense to them. But it's my experience that people in the know, yes, that really makes sense to them. John, as we close out tonight, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Folks, if you like what you're seeing, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, comment, like, share. You can also hit the super chat, super stickers, and super thanks later on. John, I do want to ask you, what's next for you? What What do you think the future holds for the alien interrogation video and for you, as a matter of fact, because I'm certain this has to pique your interest into the phenomenon, and I would love to know where are you going to go from here? Well, I've been honest for 55 minutes, and I will continue to be honest. Uh, personally, for me, what's next is getting the hell out of the UFO community because it's <laughs> emotionally drained me. It's insulted me. Um, it, uh, uh, despite the fact that there have been so many individuals on the Internet, government, contractors that have risked life, limb, career, pension to help me, and I am eternally grateful. But I, I can't be on this playground anymore where – Every where it's a it's a pro wrestling match, good guy, bad guy, constantly fighting, fighting, fighting. Can't do it. So I I can't wait to back off of that. What's next for the entire project? Um, this is entire documentary is sitting on the desk of unscripted television, of a of a of a TV network, and we're waiting to see if it'll be picked up. And if it isn't, then we go to the next person, the next person. I do have a fallback plan before January, December 31st to get out the entire documentary. We've already got a studio set up in case, you know, our fallback position, because I've been promising people, and this has been going on, this meaning getting it to TV for three years. And I'm getting it to TV, folks, because the media is, the newspaper media has ignored me, and I've ran out of money for this project. So to finish this, I need the help of a producer. OK, this isn't a grifter moment. I don't have any I don't want your credit card. I don't want you to like click, click and just subscribe any of my videos or don't want anyone's money. And I've used my own money, but I need help finishing it. And the world needs to know this. And I've tried to do the New York Times route. They won't do it. So now I'm forced to go to Hollywood. Call me a grifter or sell out. I don't give a shit. But that's what. So this when this documentary comes out, it's going to change the world. I'm going to tell who Victor is. I'm going to show who he is. We're going to pick a, take apart the video, get the close-ups. We're going to tell the men in the room. And I've shared this information with about seven trusted UFO researchers. So another grifter comment, he's hiding everything like every other UFO grifter. No, there's about seven people, UFO people, Linda Howell, Dr. Michael Sala, Michael Carter, um, people like that who have this entire investigation with all the names, Victor's name. I've shown Victor's face to a couple of podcasters. So I have done my diligence of not holding this information in. So it's going to be on TV one way or another. And, um, and, uh, and my journey uh, will be over. Well, we and I'm say, glad uh, that I, I, I to tell the tale. We definitely wish you luck on that, John. We hope Thank that you. when it go, does yeah. get out there, that you'll come back and join us. I will. I, I, I got to send this to you, though. John, listener Sean West wants to know, hey, John, can you tell the story about Senator John McCain's reaction to you asking him about extraterrestrials? He was the senator on the bus tour that looked at me and said, you don't need to know anything about that. Yes. Went into the bus, never talked to me the rest of the weekend. Why? Over three letters on a hoaxed film? Really? Exactly. Start well, there. Make, John, make it make sense. You know. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank thanks you. to all our listeners. We've had uh, quite a showing on YouTube and Twitter tonight. We really appreciate all of you. Smitty, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Dr. Mouse. This is All Things Unexplained. And as we close out tonight and our show on the alien interrogation, the alien interview with John Stewart, then I can't help but think 
we have to get out in the woods. The truth is still out there. We have to start looking up the skies for our own selves and look for the truth. Because when we get out there and get off our screens, get off our phones, looking for Bigfoot, looking for UFOs, looking for extraterrestrials, looking for the truth, we might not find Bigfoot or UFOs, but we might just find ourselves out there. Thanks, John, for being with us tonight. Amazing, amazing show, and we're so grateful for our listeners. And always remember, be happy, be strange, and listen to all things unexplained. Good night. Not everybody. All things I explain. What's your hot take on Travis Taylor? <laughs> <laughs> I've got an exclusive for you guys if you okay. want it about yeah, the Alaska. Absolutely. We do. Okay, okay. Dr. Taylor was revealed to be the chief scientist of the UAP task force with the Pentagon. So some of that I think, sir, will save for post session. All Things Unexplained is free to watch on YouTube and listen to wherever you get your podcasts. If you would like to support our show, you can visit our YouTube store. Additionally, you can find us on Venmo under All Things Unexplained. Be sure to check out our website, allthingsunexplained.com. All proceeds from the sales of Dr. Mounce's books on Amazon and Audible also go straight to our show.